Granite is a volcanic or an igneous rock. It's hard, resistant to weathering, and even to weight being put upon it. Yet at the same time, it can be shaped and the surface can be polished to a smooth, shiny finish, it makes it desirable for all kinds of construction uses. However, the precise definition of whether a rock is granite does depend upon whether you talk to a geologist or a builder. For the construction industry, opting for a far wider definition of granite, gleaning up to 10 different types of rock. Classification of granite is a little bit awkward since, like most rock, granite is a combination of different minerals and a range of proportions with all kinds of minor components added in. This can mean that two examples of granite look significantly different from each other, especially in the range of colours, which go from white through grey to pink and even to red. However, given these variations, granite is a coarse grained rock consisting mainly of feldspar or quartz. These and other compacted crystals in granite are of substantial size, which are clearly visible to the naked eye. So even these grains in the rock, which are the basis for the name granite. One of the reasons that granite is different from other volcanic rocks is that granite is an intrusive rock. It means that the magma created the granite forced its way up through existing rock formations, but didn't actually make its way to the surface. So the granite cooled fairly slowly, allowing for time for the large grains within the rock to form. But also, because there were other layers of rock still on top of the granite, the rock formed whilst under pressure, which gives granite many of its resilient properties. The method of granite formation can result in the creation of a batholith, which is a large area of volcanic rock, some or all of which is visible on the surface. As the magma forces its way upwards, it also causes the rock on top of the magma to also to rise upward, creating new hills or even a mountain range, rather than forming the standard volcano. The magma rise then spreads out over a fairly wide area. After the magma cools and the granite is formed just beneath the surface, rock above the granite, which is normally considerably softer than the granite, starts to weather away and erode until most of it's gone, just leaving behind a large granite mound or a batholith. Probably the largest granite batholith is the coastal range arc, which with a few minor interruptions basically stretches from the bottom of California just to the border of Alaska. Now, granite can have some key metals and trace amounts that have a significant impact on the surrounding environment. These ones are potassium and uranium. Occasionally these metals are found in veins in the granite rock. Normally when these metals are present they're fairly, fairly evenly distributed in the granite. Also making the granite mining for these metals fairly impractical. However, because the volume of granite is so large in some places, the isotopes of these metals can make the rocks slightly radioactive. The presence of these metals can mean the level of background radiation in areas with substantial amounts of granite can actually be double that of other areas. However, this level isn't normally enough to have a serious impact on human health. The amount of uranium present in granite, though, can produce significant amounts of radon gas as the uranium decays, which, if not properly accounted for, can be a significant risk to human health. The other result of all this radioactive material in the rock is that it can heat up to such an extent that geothermal energy can be commercially extracted from the granite, the rock acting like some huge, low-powered nuclear generator. 